Welcome back to the Strength and Speed Podcast. I'm your host, Conquer the Golden Pro and Strength and Speed owner, Evan Preparis. I got a special guest with me on the line, which I'm really excited about. Before we get to him, though, a quick word from this episode's sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Mudgear. If you're not familiar with Mudgear, I'm not sure what you're even doing in the OCR world. Mudgear is the socks that's on every athlete, pretty much on every start line across the U.S. and nation and uh, worldwide. They also make some other products. They make seat seat shields, which I always have trouble saying, since you get car cover for your seat so you don't get mud on there. They make some uh, Mad Grip gloves that I've used for Ultra OCR. They make uh, they have a shower toga that they sell. They have some shirts. They have some race jerseys. So basically all the great products. And I've just released a couple articles about Mud Gear. Uh, one of them is called Mud Gear in it for the long haul. I would check that out on Mud Run Guide. It's talking about how Mud Gear has been a mainstay of the industry for literally as long as I can remember. And then the other big thing, obviously, Bobby Ross's commercial, Mud Gear Made Tougher. If you haven't seen it yet, go over to the Mud Gear Facebook page. Check it out. It's awesome. Got a lot of footage of Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Team and uh, filmed at a lot of it at uh, Casey Timber Challenge in Kansas City. All right, let's get to today's guest. Joining me on the podcast, I have someone. I was, I was once told that I would never get him on a podcast, but here we are. I have one of the co-founders of Conquer the Gauntlet, Stephen Main Prize. Stephen, welcome. Howdy all. I don't know who told you I wouldn't do the podcast, but I love that that uh, rumor is circulating. <laughs> it, you, you've always been more of a kind of like the, the low-key guy um, over at Conquer the Gauntlet. So, yeah, I don't know. Just kind of, uh, you know, you're a hard worker. You go and you build the courses. You make them great. And uh, typically, I, I feel like you're out of the spotlight most of the time. Yeah, it is true. Um, <laughs> you know. We all, we all have strengths and weaknesses, and some people are better at uh, probably like promoting or, um, I don't know, maybe just the, these audio type recorder things or even just writing articles or kind of, you know, being the face of things. And someone, someone's got to put the nose of the grindstone and, and get stuff done. So, uh, yeah, I've kind of done, done a little bit uh, more of this stuff in the last couple of years. Uh, so, yeah, get, getting kind of happened to do some more of this just because of the way the, you know, the business has gone. But it's good. Right. right. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. We're going to spend the majority of the episode talking about uh, the One Conquer the Gauntlet in 2021, the 10 year anniversary event, Labor Day weekend. It's a three day event. Uh, we're going to get to all those details, and Steve's going to give us whatever some sneak peeks he can get, give us later. Before we get to that, though, uh, let's jump in the Wayback Machine 10 years ago. Let's talk a little bit about the beginning of Conquer the Gauntlet. You know, how did, how did the how did it start? You know, like where did the idea come from and kind of give me some of the early, the stories from the early days. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, it kind of started, I would say me and other people who are members of the ownership at the time when it started is about uh, three or four of us uh, that kind of sat down and uh, had seen ads, Facebook stuff, YouTube ads, just kind of back how it was in 2000. 10 2011 on social media stuff was kind of advertised in a way different way than it is now but we had seen ads for obstacle course racing um 5ks crossfit competitions things like that but they weren't really um coming kind of this region of the country which if you don't know we're based here in oklahoma so it's kind of oklahoma is seen as like a, a midwest mixed with kind of like southeastern so kind of like we get tossed a lot of times in with alabama mississippi people who aren't at all into fitness, um, don't train, don't exercise, which didn't really uh, reflect my lifestyle. You know, I grew up playing every sport in high school and middle school and just always being outside, riding a bike, skateboarding, you know, do, doing whatever, play, doing paintball, working out, doing off-season workouts. So that was kind of my background as an athlete. And then I went to college um, for four or five years as I was told by everyone, you know, older than me. Hey, if you don't go to college, you're a complete and total bum and you'll make nothing of your life and you'll live, be living in a van down by the river. <laughs> so I was like, well, I guess I'm supposed to go to college now, you know? So a lot of people my age did and you go to college and then <clears throat> after college, you know, I, I kind of did that. I got a business management degree. So I kind of did that corporate ish scene. I did uh, worked at a bank for a while, uh, was an assistant manager at a couple other type uh, corporate type jobs. And just, you know, there wasn't a, a lot of at the time, um, the economy wasn't great. There wasn't a lot of opportunity in, in that. So, you know, me and the other members who thought about starting this were seeing these ads for, you know, I, I remember seeing specifically probably some Tough Mudder ads. Uh, I probably can't, not that I don't want to name it, but I don't remember any other specific ones. I do remember seeing Tough Mudder ads, me and the other people who started the race. 
um, with with the, me and my wife. So it was just like, hey, maybe we should just set one of these up here in Tulsa. Like no one else is coming here, you know. So we were like, well, I think we could. I could almost like do this like part time with my other job. Like I could build stuff in the evenings and weekends for you know. We'll set a date on the calendar and we'll have four or five months to kind of build stuff, and then we'll just have the, the event day. Obviously. At the time, I didn't know exactly what all went into it, but we were like, well, we got, we got like a year to figure that out. So we'll just, you know, kind of start it out um, that way. So, you know, we were seeing ads and seeing videos and promotion for that this was kind of a thing. And I was into athletic stuff and training hard and also just kind of grew up around a dad that was a hardworking blue collar mechanic. So I was around tools quite a bit. Summers in college, I worked uh, every kind of construction job you can think of from building pole barns to putting roof on houses to work in disaster relief like for flooded out buildings did some masonry work and bricklaying so I was used to working hard just to make money through college so I was like I, I think any of the hard work that comes about will be able to knock that out um, so I, I don't know it definitely also was just like it was a, at the time a really big God thing I'm not trying to jam my faith down on anybody, but I'm a, I'm a big believer in Jesus Christ. Um, and that's really my, my, my worldview and my anchor is, is uh, trying to be a godly person and work my best to, you know, be a light in the world. So definitely we started it. There was a lot of prayer that went into it. And I was like, God, if this is what you want us to do, we're going to, you know, build this website. And luckily, a blessing from God, I had a friend who was really good at videography and graphic design and website building. And he was just starting his business. So I kind of made a deal with him. It was like, hey, if you you know design this website for me, once we get signups, then you know I'll pay you once the money comes in. But I don't have any money like really up front, hardly any. So he he was a real good friend from high school. He's like, all right, we'll do that. So uh, we did. We basically designed the website and had enough money to run ads. I think for forty or fifty days. I don't even think it was two months worth of ads. And we we're like, all right, God, if this is what you want us to do, we'll get enough signups and we'll use that those that money from the first initial signups to run more ads, do more promotion, and then eventually just build the obstacles, you know. So we had, we kind of, I think we had like some blueprints of what we would design on the website, but it was kind of vague. Our first event, it was like, you know, we're, we're going to have your classic OCR stuff, which OCR wasn't really even a term. We were like, we're going to have your, your cool stuff that you would see at like a Boy Scout or a young military type obstacle run, some walls, a cargo net, a monkey bar over water, and then we'll have like another you know, 15, 16 really unique ones that we'll think of that we'll bring to the event. So I guess people bought the idea. And again, you know, God bless us with signups that first year. And the uh, rest is kind of history. I don't want to bore you too much. I know we want to kind of get to the future and, and what's going on with the 10th year anniversary. But that's kind of the, the, the background of that. So, you know, me and uh, there's four people that were uh, that started the race and we each kind of had a role and we just, you know, tried our best to, to do what we could to make it work. Um, I've always tried to, you know, just say I'm whatever I'm whatever the gauntlet needs me to be. So if today the gauntlet needs me to unload a semi for 12 hours in the sun, that's what I'll do. But sometimes, you know, like if it needs me on this podcast, like on the podcast, I'm, you know, I, I don't normally do like you alluded to the beginning. I don't normally do this stuff, but if it's something that um, will help conquer the gauntlet out, I'm more than willing to do it. So I don't really, I don't shy away from work or any type of situation, but I'm also not like a limelight guy. I don't have to be on the podcast. I just want the races to be good. I want people to come to the races and be challenged. I want them to meet uh, other good people uh, around their area and be even people that travel to the events. I want them to meet, uh, you know, uplifting people that aren't negative, don't have negative outlooks on life, aren't there to take advantage of other people or toot their own horn, but just want to push themselves and push the people around them and, uh, you know, be better people at the end of the day. If you don't know about the three C's of Conquer the Gauntlet, that's character, commitment, and community. So I think that's three things that that our, our world needs and definitely our nation needs. Um, and especially as a, as a, as a father, it's something that I think we, we need our, our fathers in this country to have is to, to be good leaders and be there for their kids and show their character and be part of their community and be committed to those that they um, say they'll be committed to. So I think those are important things uh, that conquer the gauntlet, hopefully instills in people. Um, some people may come to the events and have no idea that that's kind of, part of it but that's fine too if they if they think the obstacles are cool and they want to keep coming to get the cool experience that's also awesome so i don't know what else you want me to say as far as background <laughs> but that's kind of the the brief uh as brief as i could make it yeah no that was awesome and i love the fact that you were like well there's no or there, there's currently no race companies coming to the midwest so like let's fix the problem ourselves let's let's do this ourselves 
Um, so I love that. You know, a lot of a lot of people complain. Well, oh, why isn't there a company here? Why isn't this venue coming here? Well, like, we'll do something about it. You know, and whether that yeah, be I- talking to a company and getting signups to bring a bring a race company to you, or like literally starting your own brand. You know, I think that's that says a lot about a uh, type of person you are and the type of character you have. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely not just me. I, I definitely should say that it's not like I had this great idea and and I did everything right. I mean, I've made massive errors, as probably any race director or ownership of race series would admit, if they're being honest. Like, when you do this for 10 years, there's calls you make because of weather or here's how we're going to run our marketing strategy for the year. And you hold, oh, we'll hold this event in this city and then it bombs and you lose 10 grand. So, you, I mean, stuff, stuff, uh, I've made errors and it definitely is not like I sat here yeah. and came up with Conquer the Gala. It was a large team of people. And even like, I mean, you know, as being on the pro team, there's people that you meet that end up being on a street team or a pro team or just help you make a video here or share a cool graphic they made or, you know, make a stick bumper sticker for you and say, here's a bumper sticker design. You can have it free. So, I mean, that's one of the awesomest things about, you know, this OCR community is you bump into people and rub elbows with people that have good ideas that are willing to, you know, help promote these brands, especially people that you meet here in, you know, Tulsa or Little Rock or Wichita or Dallas, where places where they're not getting 10 events a year. So, yeah, like, like you said, we, we kind of saw and uh, uh, thought there'd be a market here because no one else was coming and we could have kind of sat around and complained or we could have, you know, tried to make a cool event for people to come to. So all I'm hoping now is people, will, runners will follow our lead and see that we're, you know, risking mortgages and all everything we can to keep holding these events, especially in the post-COVID world. So if we can take the gamble and set up a website and commit to doing all this work and building a brand and taking the risk, they can just at least commit to, you know, tossing down, I think our early entry fee is like 44 bucks, like throw down two million dollar bills and show up and have fun. You know, that's not that much of a commitment and you're going to have a blast. So that's what we're hoping is people, you know, in this region will keep following our lead and, and sign up for the events. Gotcha. Yeah. And I, you know, you, you mentioned your faith and, your your race series has absolutely been a blessing to me personally and i know um, many other people in the ocr community so i mean um you guys it's just been it's been absolutely phenomenal over the last uh six years getting to work a little bit behind the scenes with you and um yeah it's just i've just had a lot of good things come my way because of the conquer the gauntlet name and i'm super appreciative and uh, i just want to thank you publicly for everything uh, you've done so let's thank you too i mean you guys have I know you're over the pro, a lot of people, you, you specifically by name and other people that are on our pro team and some that aren't even are. I mean, I, I see everything at Conquer the Gauntlet has nothing to do with me and it has 100% to do with God and he's blessed me and my family. So we're going to just keep trying to churn out events. And like you said, I don't, I don't like take my faith and jam it down someone's throat, but I, if someone's going to interview me and ask a question, I'm definitely going <laughs> to let him know that, you know, it's a big part of my life and uh, that's, you know, uh, it's something that matters to me. And if you come to our event, you probably wouldn't have it you know, thrown at you, but, um, cause I don't jam it down. Other people throw it un, uninvited, but you know, it's definitely something that's a blessing to our life. And I know that nowhere, I know where blessings come from. So. Yeah. Right on. So before we jump into the 10 year anniversary event, uh, event and details, where did the name conquer the gauntlet come from? Like, where- um, well, so there's actually an old, uh, movie called first night starring Sean Connery and Richard Gere that uh, me and my brothers used to watch growing up as kids. And there was this one uh, scene where Richard Gere, he plays Lancelot, has to run this mini obstacle course, and it's called The Gauntlet. Uh, There's like swords swinging at him, and uh, it's just, it's a really cheesy 90s movie, but it's about King Arthur and Camelot. Uh, So he like, he is the only knight, obviously, that makes it to The Gauntlet. So we thought that was a cool name, but then just calling it The Gauntlet was kind of not, it didn't have the same, uh, I don't know, gusto as run the gauntlet. We thought of race the gauntlet. I think we probably had like 15 names on the board when we were first meeting to uh, discuss names. And that was the one that kind of everyone decided on it. Because it had the shortening of going to CTG, which I think is what most people refer to it as. But then when you say it's full name, it sounds, I don't know if it sounds more menacing, but then, you, you know, you can tell people to conquer things. So well, there's a lot of good uh, wordplay off it for marketing too. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I, I've, I've heard that story before. And after hearing that story, I went out and bought first night on, uh, oh, nice. <laughs> because I was like, well, I gotta see, I like, I gotta see where the name came from. You know, this is important. Absolutely. I, yeah. 
<laughs> and I know like in the early days, like at one point you actually had like a gauntlet obstacle that was kind of inspired by the movie and it was like swinging things. And, uh, but I like, I, I think in, in concept, it was cooler than in, in practice per se. So, uh, yeah, I, th- I think it was, I mean, it, it was, it was pretty awesome. The, the thing is we, I don't, I don't come from money. Um, I don't, I, I, my, it's not that I'm dissing my parents. My parents are amazing. My dad is a legendary American as is my mom. Great I love folks, it. I love your dad. Here, side you note. Know, taught me my brothers. <laughs> yeah. They, definitely, they, they taught me right from wrong and they were just, you know, my dad's that blue collar guy swinging a hammer 50 hours a week, but, uh, He's just one of those old school mechanic guys that could like make an old boot run. So when we came up with the the idea, we I talked to him. He was like, "Yeah, I think I can make something with like these mechanical gears that like swings and stuff back and forth." And I mean, it was pretty awesome what he was come able to come up with with about a, a budget of like I, I probably got him like a six pack of Mountain Dew. Um, so what he was able to just come up with the, some of the car parts he had lying around and bike parts and generator. Thing. It was actually this like it ran off of like a I think an old. Uh, I remember what the motor was. It had like a motor and it swung these uh, punching bags back and forth. And, but yeah, it, the idea would, would have worked better, obviously, back at the time we put a little more money into it. But I mean, I was busy building other apples. My dad was kind of left on his own to do that. But what he came up with was pretty awesome. But it was kind of similar to the in the movie with a, a little bit of a Western OCR flair thrown in. Got it. Got it. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. If you dig around their website, you have know, sometimes you can find some old pictures of it. Cause I know I've seen it up there. Yeah, I think we have a video on our on the we have a YouTube page, which we don't do a ton of content over there. We most of our videos we just share straight to Facebook and Instagram. But I think there's one of the Gauntlet on YouTube. I think if you just go Google like conquer the Gauntlet, the Gauntlet, uh, like to put the Gauntlet in quotes, I think you probably would be able to find a video. If you're really interested. Gotcha. All right, so you know, fast. We're gonna fast forward several years, like almost ten, and uh, you know, COVID hits. You guys still managed to put on events, and then we fast forward into twenty twenty one. You're holding one event. You know, I think some people want to know, you know, what's Stephen Main Prize doing the rest of the year? You know, if you're not if you're not doing OCR, which used to take up a good chunk of the year, you know, what are you doing when you're not uh, building and promoting for uh, Conquer the Gauntlet? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, that still takes a pretty good amount of time. You wouldn't believe the the amount of emails you get just for even one event. So, I mean, between me, my wife does most of that. But just between, you know, run, you're still running ads. You're still doing tons of stuff. We've definitely had more time. We have a lot more sponsors this year. I think we have seven or eight big time sponsors, and I won't I won't rattle them all off right now. But sponsoring our event, uh, some local ones, a couple big ones. Uh, we were able to put together. A, way bigger uh, marketing package to work with uh, one of our charity uh, Folds of Honor in May. I, I don't know if you even knew about it, but we did a huge uh, push with them where every sign up we got in the month of May leading up to Memorial Day, they got $10 of that sign up straight cash to them before we got anything. So every of every sign up, they got $10 cash um, for the whole month of May leading up through the Labor Day week or excuse me, Memorial Day weekend. So a couple of things like that I was able to do. And then I own a small construction outfit that I do in off seasons anyways, because obviously with, with, you know, we're not Spartan race. We don't have 90 events a year and just get Reebok to write checks to us regardless of the errors we make. So um, I, I, our events run generally May through October anyway. So, you know, I, I can't just, I don't make people that maybe are, haven't done this for a long time think, man, those OCR people make tons of money. Look at how many people are here and they all gave 45, 50 bucks. They must be rolling in dough. That's obviously they haven't seen my house or lack of cable um, <laughs> or anything like that. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm, you know, starving to death. I'm just saying, you know, I, I'm, if I was making tons and tons of money, I would have a different career path, um, something different, but I, I definitely, again, I love what I'm doing. I've been blessed, but um, I, I just do construction stuff in the off season, usually from, you know, end of October, right? definitely after our season, we were traveling around doing eight to 10 events a year. Uh, definitely would take a solid, probably 10, 12 days of just doing literally nothing after the season. And then uh, mid October through uh, early April, uh, just do construction stuff. This, uh, this last year, I mean, I don't think anyone cares, but I, I did a couple uh, home renovations. I did a kitchen um, renovation for somebody and I know how to do all that stuff. So just, you know, running electric, running plumbing lines, drywall, mudding and taping, painting, all that kind of stuff, countertops, 
uh, cabinetry, all those kind of things. I think I, I did two big pergola jobs, uh, just like those ornate fancy pergolas that the wealthy folk like to have on their back patios. Um, I did a big 280 square foot garage conversion. They just wanted me to convert their garage into a game, a big family game room with like a projector. So, you know, boarded up the garage door and redid the outside siding and just fancied up the inside to make it a, a room instead of garage. So that, that kind of stuff. Nothing exciting that anyone in OCR probably cares about. Yeah, we're, but people are nosy. They always want to know what's going on behind the scenes. So let's, sure, yeah. let's jump into the 10-year anniversary of rent, right? So three days, there's events going on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Take me through kind of the schedule and any high points, and then I'll ask some follow-up questions. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, it's definitely I mean, we're, we're already setting up now. Uh, I don't know when you'll post this, but we're, we're out at the venue. Oh, working hard now, sweating. It was 101 degrees today with like 109 heat in. So it's pretty awesome. Um, so we're starting out Friday. Um, most OCRs, people get together and have some kind of pre-race dinner, but I think it's normally just like in the city where the event's being held and people text each other and maybe someone makes a Facebook event and you get like, you know, 15, 20 people to show up to Buffalo Wild Wings or wherever. They're not a sponsor. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but uh, <laughs> get make them pay me for it. No, I'm kidding. But, uh, you, you know, you just go eat somewhere, have a drink and, and kind of see a couple people. So uh, we've actually been doing this at our, our Little Rock venue for a while, like uh, having the pre-race dinner on site and catering it in and renting the you know big pavilion or indoor area if, if the event has one so we're doing that friday night um, i think we have quite a few people signed up for that and you can still sign up on our website for that so um you know the owners will be there the build crew will be there a bunch of volunteers will be there a bunch of my friends here from tulsa uh will, will be there i'm sure many of the pro team members will be there. are you going to be there evan uh, as long as i can get out of work early enough i'll be there yeah, cool. So I so see you might be coming down late that night. But yeah, I know a lot of people are traveling in a little bit early, maybe catching a sooner flight so they can come uh, eat. It'll be on the venue uh, or at the venue on site. So there's a big, huge. Uh, oh, actually, it's, it's Labor Day weekend. So I have all Friday. So yes, I will be there. So, so you'll be there. Cool. So uh, yeah, so they have the, there's a huge barn at the, it's at 181 Ranch, is right outside Tulsa, where the, they have a huge air conditioned barn area. Uh, this looks like classic like cowboy barn so we'll rent that out and cater in food and um that'll kind of kick the weekend off and then 8 a.m the next morning we'll start the elite wave uh, i think we have waves run until i mean it's gonna be one of the biggest events we've ever held for sure i mean just knowing it's a 10 year and, and the reach again that i'm not in any way saying i'm 100 percent responsible for i get 100% of the credit to God, but the reach we've had over the last 10 years has reached all over this region. we got people coming in. I mean, tons of people from every city that we've held events in are, are coming in. Then we got our normal Tulsa crowd, uh, you know, being an Oklahoma-based series. So I think our last event, or our last wave is 1230, um, and most of I think we're sold out. We're 1145, maybe 11, maybe noon. So our last wave is going to be at 1245 or 1, so running throughout the day. And then uh, obviously on that same day is the race we have the continuum which evan i know you're interested in that's you start in the elite wave and you just do laps um as many laps you can in five you got a five hours you know that's you have to start your last lap by 1 p.m um, so run from eight to one and then if, as long as you start your last lap by 12:59, you can get one more and even if it's slow so hopefully we can get evan to get seven or eight laps right evan? <laughs> that might be a stretch we'll see we'll see what obstacles you put yeah, out there big. Yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll, we'll be running that all day. And then as soon as, you know, the, that race wraps up, I'll be outside uh, converting many of the obstacles on the course to team challenge obstacles, setting up some team specific obstacles for the big team challenge uh, event on Sunday. That team challenge was, uh, we had, we've done it several years before. We haven't done it for, I don't think two years. Uh, yeah, we haven't done it since 2018. So we didn't do it in 19 or 20. Uh, I didn't really know that we had that much interest in it we set a cap at 20 teams which you've never done before but i had some really cool obstacles knowing i wouldn't be traveling around as much i knew there were some really cool obstacles i could do for you know where each team could have a lane and we could have color-coded stuff and um all that kind of kind of stuff so uh we set a cap at 20 teams and it sold out in i think the third week of march i was awesome i can hear me we'll we'll 
do something to get more people involved because I've had we've had so many messages coming in. It's like May, June, July asking how they can get in. It's like, look, I bought like, all the supplies. Some of the it's just if you come to the event, you'll kind of see some of it is so specific to the team and you know building puzzle block pieces and getting a a code to unlock things that you need later in the race. It's really cool, unique, intimate atmosphere. But you know the way we do it, I, we've never had more than fourteen teams, so I didn't think it would be as thought out as it was. I guess it's awesome that it was. So next year we'll maybe tweak that so we can get thirty or forty teams on Sunday for the full event at least. So. Yeah, Sunday, and we'll, we'll wrap it up Sunday and uh, start tearing down Sunday, probably in the mid-afternoon. Awesome. So it's going to be an action-packed weekend, and we're super excited. Uh, I know Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Teams field in three teams for the team race, so we are super excited about that. Uh, the last time you guys did a team race, like you said, was 2018. It was the Sunday of Endure the Gauntlet for me, so I was a hot mess. Oh, yeah. So I basically walked the course and didn't get to experience any of the fun team obstacles. So I'm really looking forward to Sunday. I'm really looking forward to Saturday too. You know, it's been, I only did one Conquer the Gauntlet last year. So I'm, I'm, I'm itching, oh, yeah. itching for more there. Um, yeah. And, you, you know, the, obviously Conquer the Gauntlet is known for its awesome obstacles, right? Like the Stairway to Heaven, we got Pegatron, you got Tarzan Swing, which is their rig. Um, the Belly of the Beast, you know, one you go kind of under the net and some other ones. You know, what, I've heard that you're bringing out some obstacles kind of out of the vault there um, that you haven't, we haven't seen in a while. Is there, can you give us a sneak peek of any obstacles that we might see that are either new or, um, you know, maybe a blast from the past that hasn't been around recently? Yeah, I'll give you, I'll drop you a little bit of, of in, inside lane stuff here. So I'm at, we're not really doing anything new. Uh, when I sat down and thought about it, I, I talked to several street teamers and some people that aren't even on any of the teams that just have been running our race here in Tulsa for 10 years. You know, obviously talked to my wife and a lot of the other people that are very involved. Uh, and what we're kind of doing is bringing back all the days, kind of more of an overview of the last 10 years, more than it is like what's the new innovative thing for 2021, if that makes sense. So we're people who have kind of been only doing this five or six years, uh, they didn't kind of see some of the you know, the OG 2000 or early 2011, 2012, 2013, even some 2014 stuff, uh, they didn't see those. So we're bringing back some fan favorites, I would say, from from those those years, even some from the, you know, mid-20 uh, teens, like 16, 17, trying to bring back what we think are probably our, our, our we're having 30 obstacles too, as opposed to the normal 25. So the 30 of the, the would have been you know the most favorite or, or or maybe even just most unique uh since you know over the last 10 years so we're gonna have five big tarp pits um under some of the more awesome obstacles uh just that's pretty standard for it we usually have three or four i think we're gonna i know we're gonna have five for this race uh, we're bringing back uh crank it up which is a really awesome strength obstacle that i know a lot of the bigger stronger guys like because it kind of slows down the, the ninja type speed runners uh it's, it's a it's a really heavy like a cranking cranking a spool and reeling in a, a and back another balance option that's kind of similar to slack line uh that's from we, i don't think we've had it since 2014 maybe um so bringing back a balance obstacle um you always want to practice the pegboard uh if you're coming to conquer the column because you know that we're not Pegatron, and you know if it's a 10th year anniversary, it's going to be uh, awesome. So, Yep. Yeah. What about uh, up, are you bringing back Up from the Grave? No, we're not bringing back Up from the Grave. Uh, <laughs> not that one. You want that one? I kind of like that one. So for those who don't, who don't know, Up from the Grave, essentially it's a tube that goes into water. And, like, the water, it looks like you're just going – it looks like the tube just keeps going into the water. But essentially – as soon as you get into the water, you know, it extends down another inch or two, and then you kind of have to submerge underwater and come out, and it freaks people out. It's like a, it's like a fear-based obstacle, and I, I, I thought it was fine, but there was some – I remember Christina was, like, completely freaked out by it because you couldn't see the bottom of the water. So I like that one. And, yeah, the, the water level set just right so that you, you get the tube without submerging your whole head under. It's just had like, three inches of – tube clearance the water is so it's hard picking really just 25 30 obstacles for a 10th year we have had between 55 and 60 obstacles since our inception so there's a lot 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 to pick from and you know the logistics of i don't have a, we don't have a build crew this year because we weren't traveling around so obviously you know do, doing most of this with a, a smaller staff than than normal um 
with your staff is already a, a really small. Of, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, we're definitely if, – if someone's listening to this and you've never come to a Conquer, I think you should come just uh, for the uniqueness of the atmosphere. Um, we're not going to have any big wigs there, um, race directors that are trying to promote themselves and make a brand on Instagram or make $100 million from Reebok or anything like that. We're just going to have, honestly, normal everyday folks that like working out, that like challenging themselves, that like trying to push themselves to be better people, want uh, to push their fellow Americans to uh, be better and, again, have that character, commitment, and community. And if we can do that, so you should definitely come out just to, to check out our atmosphere and see how unique we are and how our unique our obstacles are built. And uh, you shouldn't miss this event. If you're going to do an OCR this year, this really is the one to come to. You can do Worlds next year. You can do a lot of these next year, but um, this is a this is a once in a lifetime event for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Easily the biggest OCR event in the Midwest, um, arguably in the U.S. So you know, I would I would definitely come out there. Uh, obviously. I'm coming out. The whole the whole Conquer the Gauntlet Pro team is coming out, and we're excited for it. I'm gonna ask this question because so people mm. people always assume I have inside knowledge of everything, uh, which sometimes is oh, true. Yeah. Usually it's not. I usually, sometimes I find out about stuff when it becomes public. And one of the questions I've been getting this year, and I'm just gonna straight up ask you: There, are people like, is this the last Conquer the Gauntlet ever? Or is is the 10 year gonna be the last one? And and that's it? Or uh, no, absolutely not. I mean, we kind of – so when you're setting these up, you have to plan stuff in a huge advance. So we always knew we were going to do a big 10-year, right? Um, and then with the way COVID – COVID crippled us pretty bad uh, last year. Um, I mean, the, the, again, I'm not trying to complain or – I would even admit if it's me that's doing it wrong, but I think anyone who's really an OCR, you can see races going out of business and you can see new ones pop up and they got a business and just look at what's happened to, you know, I could name 50 races right now. It's the, 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 the margins on these races are razors, right? So when, right when your season is about to kick off last year, COVID hits, people are already, it's already hard enough to get people to sign up to do something that's very difficult, which is one of the things that we never shied away from at Conquer the Gauntlet. If you want to go run, an easy race, you can probably find one. There's Mudarella and Mud Factor and other ones that I won't say. They're just there for people to, you know, <laughs> plop in the mud. That's not what our race is. Our race is for people that want to be challenged and that want and that want to work out every day. And they want to run. They want to lift weights. They don't shy away from it. They they want to push the rock up the hill. They don't. Their goal isn't people who are on Conquer the Their goal when they're working out isn't to push the rock or isn't to get the rock to the top of the hill. It's actually pushing the rock. Right. That's the kind of people that will always come back to our race because it's different. It's unique. And we're very unapologetic about that. If you want to do something easy, there's a lot of that in America and you can find it anywhere. <laughs> I love it. There's a lot of easy in America and there's not at Conquer the Gauntlet. So that's one of our, you know, our unique deals. So uh, all that, you know, get back on point. Sorry, I ranted a little bit there, but to get back on point, um, Last year, COVID was, was, was rough, and, you know, going into this year, it was looking like, especially talking, when you start talking to the people you have to talk to to get cities and at city parks and at big event venues and to get big event insurance to cover your event and get insured correctly, and they're telling you, oh, well, you can't, ha I'm not going to insure your event because this COVID variants out and not enough of these people are vaccinated or this guy doesn't want to wear a mask or this guy wants to wear a mask or this or that, all this stuff. You're talking insurance companies it's like well, you, they're not going to insure your event if you have more than 400 people. It's like, well, we're our goal is to get way more than that. So, you know, that's why we kind of made a decision. Hey, let's this year, let's just do the 10th year anniversary, a big blowout. Try to get everyone to come to this one venue that we know it's a ranch that we're friends with the owners of the ranch or we've become friends with the owners of the ranch. We know they're going to let us host the event. We don't need specific permits. We know this one insurance company here is going to insure the event through these uh, avenues. Let's do our big 10th year anniversary event this year. Hopefully then, you know, COVID blows over and we can, you know, see what the future holds. But this is uh, absolutely not the last Conquer the Gauntlet event. Yes. So good to so, hear. Yeah. We're, we're just, uh, you know, it was it, last year's a rough year. Um, crazy stuff going on this year. My wife and I, our oldest son's in first grade and our oldest daughter started kindergarten. And then, you know, we have another young kid uh, that she had last year. So it's just, it was a, a crazy time. And with COVID and everything else, we just decided to, hey, let's just pull the trigger on this and spend everything we can to basically kind of like an appreciation day. Like we didn't raise our prices. Like, oh, this is a 10th year anniversary event. So now you got to pay $89. We were like, hey, we want to 
appreciate all of our fans, especially here from Oklahoma, that helped us start this thing. Just We're going to throw everything we can at them, but let's just keep our prices where they've always been. Anyone can afford to do it. You just got to put the work in and train a little bit and want to be, want to be pushed on race day. Have a big blowout of mm-hmm. and, and then hopefully this fall everything is completely back to normal as far as, you know, people's – there's not a, another hesitancy to sign up for events and we can hit the ground running with, with CTG. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what the future holds, but I can assure you it's not the last CTG. Excellent. Yeah, and, you know, I, we've, been, we've been telling people to sign up for Conquer the Gauntlet well, obviously, since the beginning of this podcast, but also especially over the last year and a half, because, I mean, you guys are still holding events um, during 2020, right? Like, I think you, you held yeah. five events in 2020, which is yeah. as many as Spartan event weekends as far as races, yeah. which is, like, insane, right? Because, I mean, like you were saying, they hold, like, 90 events a year. So, yeah. um, you're you're a small brand, and uh, you're still, still putting them on, and people were still having a great time. So, you know, the Midwest a hundred percent appreciated that. And uh, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, and I've said over the last couple of years, I appreciate it. So, um, you know, I want to be respectful of your time because it is getting late and uh, it's past my bedtime. And I know you're out there slaving away in the heat building. So any other uh, final thoughts you want to share about the 10 year anniversary event or anything we missed uh, before we let you go? Uh, no, everything I could say would be would be better if you just came. So everybody listening should head over to conquerthegauntlet.com and sign up for the race, and then you can experience it yourself instead of listening to this uh, certified knuckle dragger talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Like like we were saying, it's going to be the uh, easily the biggest event OCR event in the Midwest, uh, arguably the U.S. So make sure you head over, check it out, come to conquer the gauntlet, and. Uh, Steven will see you there. I'll see you there. The pro team will see you there. And we're just going to have a great time. So, um, and thank you, know. you guys. Appreciate everything, Evan. You guys are awesome. Uh, thank you, Steven. And, yeah. uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Sounds great. All right. Catch you later. See you.